Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to break down this teaser trailer and talk a little bit more about it. But as far as like theories go and some of your comments, I've actually been, uh, when I was at the doctor today, I was just going through and just reading articles about people's feedback. I was looking at how many likes and dislikes the video had, uh, like the trailer had on the official Sony uh, page on YouTube. Uh, and I also just been reading your comments and seeing other people's comments online, going through Facebook. And I will definitely make a video talking about all that and sharing my opinions and, and going through all that stuff. That will be our very next episode. I'm gonna record that right after this. But what we're gonna do in this episode is we're just going to go through scene by scene and just take a look at some shots that I thought were interesting. And I got about 35 still images here, uh, but we'll go through them you know, fairly quickly. Some of them will go quicker than others. Uh, but we're going to just start off here with this first shot of like this nice scenery. Um, I just like the cinematography in this trailer. We talked about Matthew Libatique, who is the cinematographer of the movie, uh, that the movie shot in 35 millimeter. So you can tell almost right off the bat that this doesn't feel super digital, but you also can tell it's not finished. Uh, so there are shots in this trailer we're gonna see that just are very early. You know, um, we're, they're, not, they're not polished yet. They're, they don't look at the best that they're gonna look. Uh, a lot of these shots were just kind of thrown together. You can tell Sony reacted and they were just like, we need something out there, to, you know, while there's a lot of buzz on this Black Panther movie and a lot of you know, pre-sale tickets went through the roof. We need something out there now just to get people talking and to show people that this is a real movie that's happening because I think anyone out there who's like a Gambit fan uh, <laughs> knows that uh, that movie may never get made and so I think they were just like we got to show people something uh, but again we'll get into more of that in the next episode um, so we just got that quick shot uh, here we see uh, uh, Eddie's legs sticking out of an MRI machine and a lot of people out there kept calling this a CT scanner um, I'm going to guess that people who uh, who haven't been in an MRI or a CT scanner uh, probably, you know, don't know the difference between them. A uh, CT scanner will typically, um, and now there are different models, so, you know, there's let's take that into factor. But typically a CT scan is you on a bed, and the circle thing is more of a donut. It's, it's thin, and it goes around you, and it, it's, you know, taking um, different images. But it uses radiation, so typically a CT scan will last five minutes. Uh, it doesn't really last that long. Uh, uh, so this here, you see him sitting in it uh, from the waist up. Uh, that is an MRI machine. Uh, an MRI machine, uh, they do they do different things. Uh, but the MRI machine will be looking for like liquidy things. It'll 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 be kind of like looking for different things in your body. They can both look for similar things, uh, but they're gonna get uh, you're gonna get better results based on what you're looking for. So as an aneurysm survivor, I've been in both. Um, and uh, seeing uh, Tom Hardy in this and Eddie Brock in this MRI machine, you'll see uh, that uh, it, that's what it's known as like it's like a claustrophobic thing. It's where it's where they they slide you into a machine and it covers you know like half your body um, and it's uh, you know scanning for different stuff. But usually liquid and kind of like fluids in your body and things like that. So that would make sense. Uh, and as we get this wide shot here, as I cut to this with the uh, the two uh, scientist guys like doing an MRI on him. Um, you'll see, and you'll see the magnet uh, warning there on the wall, uh, which is uh, something that, you know, MRI machines use is magnets. So, uh, yeah, so there's no radiation in MRI machines. So those out there who are you know, don't know the difference between the two, hopefully I was able to educate on some level. Uh, but uh, so we have this shot here showing that it's an MRI machine. Uh, then you see, like, what they're scanning and what they're looking for. And you'll, um, you'll kind of see, you don't see a lot of uh, readings. Like, I was kind of hoping a shot like this would be a little bit more finished because I'm sure there's, there, there's going to be a spike, you know, when they like scan them, you're going to see this, a spike in something moving in his body and they're going to be like, whoa, what, what was that? Um, so I'm curious about that. A lot of people are theorizing that uh, he's in the MRI machine because of cancer, uh, that e e Eddie Brock has cancer. And uh, I mean, it's, it's possible in the comic books, Eddie Brock does have cancer. I wasn't so much getting that vibe from this, but it's, it's, possible i mean this seems more laid back i feel like if he was um you know um you know i don't know i, I for all i know this is the part of the movie where he because we saw like footage of him on the streets of atlanta and he was like hailing a like an uber or something and he came out of the uber and he's like twitching and stuff like that uh, for all i know that's a scene where he's going to the hospital to get himself checked out because maybe he's like hey something's wrong with me i'm twitching i'm having all these spasms uh can you tell me what's wrong with me doctor and for all i know these people aren't even life foundation people they could just be people that are scanning him so i'm not going to jump to the the cancer conclusion right away but if that is the case i mean eddie brock in the comic books 
does have cancer, uh, and the symbiote was feeding off of it in a, in a form, so uh, or in a way. So we're going to cut here now to the shot I really like uh, from a stylistic standpoint. Uh, we have Eddie Brock, the camera's moving with him. You kind of see his like shoulder slumped. He's moving down the street, uh, and then it immediately cuts to him inside of a you know, like a bodega or something, or like a little uh, corner store. Uh, and as someone who, in my last apartment, would walk down and visit corner stores all the freaking time, because that's where I lived, was just surrounded by mom and pop corner stores, um, this was just kind of neat. You have the person at the counter who's just kind of not interested, and uh, and he's just walking in. But the camera stays very similar at a, a very similar angle, and he's in a very similar position. So the, the, the you know, when it cuts, it's feels very fluid. It feels like just the background changed and not him. You know, he feels like he's in a, in a, in the same spot. So I like stuff like that in movies. It just adds a little bit of style to things. Uh, here we have Anne Wayne. We have uh, Michelle Williams who, ooh, crush time. Sorry, I had to freak out a little bit. Uh, I have a crush on her. She's awesome. Uh, but uh, yeah, Dawson's Creek, you know, big time. Old school Dawson Creek fan here. Uh, so yeah, seeing her there, she's in a hospital. Again, we don't know. Like this could be, this could be Life Foundation related. It could not be. Um, it's it's hard to tell. Uh, so we'll we'll get into that. Uh, Life Foundation seems like they have a, a hospital level on the surface, and then they're like the Umbrella Corporation from Resident Evil, where they have their secret labs, which we'll we'll see shots of here soon. So uh, just a quick shot of Anne Wang. Uh, here we're in the Umbrella Secret Lab, uh, and you see back there there's a guy like in a hazmat suit and he's looking at something. I think that's a cylinder, uh, possibly one of the symbiote cylinders, and this could be the scene where Eddie Brock has maybe broken in to the um, to the lab and he's you know doing investigative journalism. He's trying to get to the bottom of what they're hiding here. Uh, again, that's just speculation. I don't know. For all I know, he's just this is him after. Um, you know, him visiting the hospital or something, and he's just walking downstairs and seeing that there's more symbiotes, and he's coming down to stop, uh, you know, to do what he can to stop other people from being uh, infected in the way he's infected. Uh, so we don't know. Uh, but it's just, it's a pretty neat shot. Again, I like the cinematography. It just, it looks good. Even though some of these shots, you can tell they're going to correct the some of the coloring on these, especially this shot probably. Um, there's, there's going to be some work that needs to be done on these scenes. Uh, then we have the sequence where the, the narrator says something about death and how um, he, they cut to this shot of something under a, a not really a body bag it's it's more like um I mean I guess kind of body bagish it's a little bit more see-through uh, but uh, yeah you get this shot we don't know what it is uh, I tried slowing this down and getting a better shot of this I have a couple shots here uh, you see something in the background there like little chunks of things um, and at the bottom for all you know this could be an alien creature this could be something because remember the symbiote has attached itself to other aliens before and other life forms so this could be something where that the ship that we're about to see could have had an alien you know a symbiote on it and maybe it was like you know maybe it was an alien transporting a symbiote uh, and then the symbiote you know broke out and caused the ship to crash or something um, but also we know that this thing if it is a body of any kind it looks like this could be a head and a jawline sticking up or it could be a foot and could be something cut in half or you know an alien with no legs like we, we have no idea could be a couple different things uh, but we do know that when the symbiote attaches itself to you in the comics and plan of the symbiotes uh, there was a whole race of aliens that the symbiotes took over and then after they were done draining them of their fluid and life form they moved on to the next thing and just left like a husk of a body uh, behind sometimes pieces of a body so for all we know it could be something uh, like that <laughs> i don't know um for all we know, there could just be like, you know, Easter eggs under there. I don't know, like literal Easter eggs. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so we have this shot here uh, where we have the big crash site. And there's some interesting uh, architecture and design in the thing back there. Like whatever it is, it looks, it almost looks like a ship, but it also almost looks like an egg hatching. You can kind of see like these little like weird fleshy kind of pieces that are like coming off of it. It just, I don't know, it looks really weird. Um, and you have all the hazmat guys and, and, and uh, Life Foundation people that are coming to investigate. So um, either we get a crash of some kind, uh, like an alien ship crashing on here, uh, which I'm assuming that is because we go to this next shot here and we got a close up of it. Um, or for all we know, it's something that's forming. Um, you know, as we know from the Plan of the Symbiotes comic, uh, there is uh, the symbiotes kind of, a couple of them have gotten loose in the city and they are bringing pieces together from different labs and stuff and, and they're like you know stealing machinery and they're building uh, a gateway that leads back to their home world uh, so that they can plan an invasion uh, so uh, so 
For all we know, it could be something forming and being built and taking shape, and this is the life foundation coming across it. Or it could be a crash site, which is probably more likely because you'll probably want to, you know, tell simplify the story as much as you can. Uh, so you'll probably have the life foundation build the the, the thing and not this. Uh, but I still thought this was neat and and full of possibilities. So you guys, let me know down below what you think uh, uh, theory wise. Um, all right, and then we have this shot here of Eddie Brock waking up in the MRI machine. Uh, when you're in there, you you know typically don't want to move too much. Same with CT scans, uh, but uh, it's harder in MRIs because you have to be in there for about 30 minutes uh, at least sometimes. So uh, so yeah, so you have Eddie Brock waking up, and I've made this face numerous times while inside MRIs. Um, so yes, the next shots we have here are the three shots with the symbiotes. Uh, I just have three quick images as we go through leading up to Riz Ahmed here. So we have the first one and you just kind of see a little bit of it gestating. You see a second pod in front of it um, and we can't really see what's in there. I tried from a couple of different angles. It looked like there might have been something in there, uh, but it was it was small, I think. I couldn't really tell. Uh, but this looks like uh, this shot will probably be enhanced uh, when they you know do the final product because maybe they only had time to CG in one symbiote right now in a jar and maybe they didn't have time to do the the other one uh or or make it more visible so this could be a shot that gets fixed up plus i think the lighting is a little bit off here so they might tweak this a little bit as well um especially with the symbiote when it moves around like you know just uh they'll probably tweak a few things here uh, and then we see riz ahmed and we see some of the scientists behind him and i couldn't really recognize anyone i was trying to look for actors that we saw on imdb so far and try to see if any of those people behind. It looks like that might be Jenny Slate. Uh, someone pointed that out to me. Um, I think Venom Gaming and someone else pointed out to me that there's the lady on the right there um, uh, with the glasses in the back, that that is uh, possibly Jenny Slate, which I, it kind of looks a little bit like her, but uh, yeah. So we have, we're in an underground facility. You see the car ramp coming in directly into their facility. So super top secret, definitely Umbrella Corporation-esque. Uh, for sure, and these tubes are really cool looking. Uh, that's a neat looking prop. Like they look, they look intense. Um, but I guess they got to be to contain something like this. So uh, next shot we have is the a big action sequence. You see cars crashing and Eddie on the motorcycle. We saw a ton of this. I think a lot of this is shot in Atlanta. Um, so uh, yeah, and you see kind of bystanders <laughs> back there just hanging out. Uh, probably couldn't. Uh, you know, I don't know if those are purposeful extras or if they were just like, yeah, just you guys got to stand behind this line and that's just a shot of the people that are like two blocks or a block away um but yeah you get this shot here and we we like i said we've looked at some of this footage it looks like there's going to be a big chase sequence in the movie where Betty, uh, eddie Ven venom and eddie I, I combined his name um where eddie is uh, riding a motorcycle trying to escape uh you know life foundation people and roland trees because we see these suvs we saw them in other shots where um you know from set footage and stuff from atlanta filming and other people that posted pictures out there um that they had these F these big SUVs uh, that were coming after Eddie. So uh, yeah, here's an interesting shot. We have two of them. I got two. One of them looks like Tom Hardy. The other one, you know, it's like he's moving so fast. So you're like, ah, is it him or is it his stunt double? You don't know. I'm guessing it's just him. It's just probably just one long shot of him running. Uh, but he's running through the woods, and uh, and it's it's uh, so the the woods thing is interesting because we obviously I talked about this before where I had a theory about some things that. You know, we, it turned out to be wrong, which is totally fine. It's, it's going to happen when we make this show, you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, here I'm thinking either he's on the run from the Life Foundation at this point. Is the Life Foundation's facility in a, in a wooded area? We saw that they had, um, it looked like they were filming downtown Atlanta. Uh, you know, we saw the buildings they were filming at. And, uh, and those are obviously right in the middle of the city. So him running through the woods, I'm wondering if it's, if it's him... Um, you know, learning about the spacecraft because, you know, obviously that was out in the woods. Maybe this is him, again, being, in, you know, doing his journalistic, you know, investigation and he sees the the spacecraft and he knows the Life Foundation's behind it and this is him running now because he's like, all right, I, I know too much maybe and, and maybe someone spotted him and they're chasing after him because uh, it looks very intense. And then it looks like he maybe jumps off or falls off a cliff or a ledge or something and ends up landing in water. And I don't know if these are directly connected, these two shots, but at the same time, he's wearing very similar clothes. He's got like the hoodie on and stuff as he's into the water there. So uh, I'm guessing it could be one after the other. And again, when, when you're cutting a trailer together, you're probably pulling scenes from close to each other in the movie if you can 
to uh, you know because that's all you got. A lot of these shots haven't been color corrected yet. They haven't been done yet, and they they're trying. So they're they're completing whole scenes at a time. And a lot of the stuff is earlier stuff that was shot, not the recent San Francisco stuff that we saw. Um, that they shot like just weeks ago. So a lot of this is going to be footage from Atlanta or the times they were filming in the Atlanta area because that's probably all they have done and have semi-tweaked by now. Uh, so yeah, so then we have these, these two shots here uh, with people inside of uh, like an office. And uh, this is pretty funny, the design of this place. Um, it it doesn't seem very uh, it's it's interesting stylistically because I don't know of an office that is set up like this. I know of production offices that look like this where they have like these six foot tables and they have PAs sharing you know desk space and you know they're like all right you you guys each share a six foot table and, and you each have a monitor and uh, you guys and even typically sometimes though in offices they'll face each other um, still but this so this is design wise is very interesting to me. Um, how they have all these tables lined up with all these monitors. Um, it, it doesn't seem like a, a how you would really do an office, but you know, whatever. Life Foundation, they're, they're weird people, I guess. Uh, they want everyone to feel close. Uh, so yeah, then you have uh, this shot where everything clears out. All the, all the um, electronics fly off the tables and, and move out of the way and everyone gets pushed away. Their chairs get pushed away. So I'm wondering if there's some kind of magnetic feedback, maybe from the MRI, maybe when um, uh, Eddie has like his seizure moment that we'll get to here soon and he freaks out maybe it, it's it reverse polarities the magnetic pull on the MRI and the whole building you know gets a like an EMP goes off or just like or just something magnetic pushes out and just cause everything in the building to uh, break away uh, or it could be some kind of weapon that gets fired uh, you know sonic weapons and, and, and auditory weapons get used against Venom. So for all we know, it could be something like that being fired and it just boom and you see kind of the, the reaction to that. I don't know, a lot of possibilities, but I just think it's a cool shot. I, I don't know, I like this shot. Um, I can see why maybe they set up the office this way now is because they were like, oh, we need this effect. And it probably made more sense to set up the desks like this, even though it doesn't look very practical. Um, and then in the last couple shots here, we have Eddie f like freaking out in pain. Some of these shots, like you'll see in my my, uh, sc my screen grabs here, uh, he looks genuinely in pain. Uh, like it, it does not look like a good time. Uh, his eye popping open in that one shot right there. Uh, he's like, ah, you know, and his, his eye, ah, like uh, that just, it, he's definitely amplifying his intensity for some of these shots. Now for me, for intensity sake, I think things are intense when they're short. Uh, they're scarier when they're short. When someone has a bit of rage or an agony and it's short, that amplifies the the, the you know intensity for me. So for this shot, I wish it was a little bit quicker. Uh, you, but I know why they made it drag out a little bit. It's because they want to show in these last few scenes here, you can see the symbiote coming up in his neck, which I, I didn't see my first viewing when we did the reaction uh, part of the video. You know, when I made that video, I didn't see that. But when I went through and did the screen grabs, I noticed that and I was like, oh wow, that's that's the symbiote going up and it's in his bloodstream. Uh, but again, early shot because I'm sure they're going to tweak this and, and amplify the look of it. Uh, but I, what I hope they do is they edit it down. I hope they make it faster where he just goes like, ah, and then like maybe out of his eye you see like liquid pour out and then you see like the thing just go, you know, because I like that in the Sam Raimi movie where it just moved quick. It was twitchy, but it was quick. And, uh, and I kind of hope they do. I know they're going for something different here. But I hope for intensity's sake for this scene, I hope it's something really intense. Whereas like when he bulges his eye, I would have liquid just go, you know, and just like squirt out of his eye. And I would just make it like as, as far as the, as, as long as the rating system wasn't didn't have a problem with that, I would amplify that uh, to, to an extent and make it more uh, intense and scary. Uh, and then we have like this ghostly image of the symbiote giving us kind of a, a tease of what the face might look like. Uh, and which I'm curious about because the way this maneuvers on, it's also similar to the teaser poster we got of how it looked like brushed on. Uh, so I'm wondering if there's going to be like a, a light element, you know, like almost like a, the symbiote's pure black. And then like, I kind of like how Spawn has, where it just has like this mist that, you know, f you know, kind of froths off of it. Um, you know, kind of how like, uh, you know, the ice when you have like, you know, really, you know, really cold ice and you just have that fog coming off of it. I wonder if that's, kind of the effect they're going to have on Venom. I don't know. I don't know if that's a tease to that or if it's just, you know, how it is. And then that, you know, forms down and makes this V symbol here. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the footage. I mean, that's everything I, I thought was interesting and that I thought I could talk about. Uh, you guys let me know what you think of all this down below. And like I said, I'm going to make another video and put it up immediately as, as fast as I can after this. 
and uh, and it'll talk about your guys' reactions to this, my reaction to it, what I think, what I think Sony succeeded with, what I think they failed with, and what the internet thinks uh, the, this trailer succeeded and failed at. So we'll get into that in the next episode. But let me know down below about this breakdown, what you thought. Thanks for watching so much. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you in the future. Peace.